Complex multiplication has the effect of rotating the position of a number in the complex plane. In this video, we will see an intuitive explanation for this effect. Here is the complex number a equals 2 plus 2i, marked on an Argan diagram. It is the point 2, 2 on the diagram. Here is a second complex number, b equals 1 plus 3i, which is at point 1, 3. If we multiply a by b, the result is minus 4 plus 8i. We will look at this calculation in a moment. The new point a times b is further away from the origin, and it is also rotated relative to the point b. Let's mark the angle between a and the x-axis and call it x. The angle between point b and the new point a times b is also equal to angle x. So multiplying b by a has the effect of rotating b by the angle of a. If we look at the multiplication calculation, it is not obvious why this should be. We multiply 2 plus 2i by 1 plus 3i. This is 2 plus 2i times 1, plus 2 times 2i times 3i. This gives 4 terms, 2 plus 2i plus 6i plus 6i squared. Since i squared is minus 1, this simplifies to minus 4 plus 8i. But why would the two angles be the same? We can repeat this with a different complex number, c equals minus 2 minus i, just to check if we get the same result. We will multiply by the same value, a. This time again, the same thing happens. Multiplying by a has the effect of rotating c by the angle of a. We would like to understand what it is about complex numbers that makes multiplication behave this way. Complex numbers bear some similarity to vectors, so maybe this could offer some insight. First let's look at complex number addition versus vector addition. This diagram shows two complex numbers on an Argan diagram. a equals 3 plus 2i and b equals 1 plus 4i. To add these two complex numbers, we must add the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. We can illustrate this by drawing a line equivalent to number b onto the end of number a. This gives the result 4 plus 6i. The second diagram shows a normal xy plane, rather than an argon diagram. We can represent vectors on this plane. Vector a is 3, 2. This is the vector equivalent of the complex number 3 plus 2i. We can add vector b by placing it at the end of vector a. Vector b is 1, 4, which is the vector equivalent of the complex number 1 plus 4i. The sum of the two vectors is 4, 6, which is the vector equivalent of 4 plus 6i. So adding two vectors gives an equivalent result to adding two complex numbers. We will now look at complex multiplication in more detail. We will use two general complex numbers, d equals s plus ti, and e equals u plus vi. If we multiply d and e, we get this, de equals su plus tui plus svi plus tvi squared. Since i squared is minus 1, tvi squared becomes minus tv, so we can simplify the expression. The real part is SU minus TV, and the imaginary part is TU plus SV. We could do the same as we did for addition, and compare complex multiplication with vector multiplication. But we can't compare those things directly, because there is no way of multiplying two two vectors to give another two vector as a result. Vectors support two types of multiplication. The dot product, which produces a scalar value, and the cross product, which only applies to three vectors, not two vectors. So what can we do instead? Well, if we pre-multiply a two vector, E in this case, by a two by two matrix, we get a two vector as a result. We can use the two by two matrix J, K, L, M, and multiply by E, which is U, V. The result is the vector ju plus kv, lu plus mv. Notice that the resulting vector 
has a similar form to the result of the complex number multiplications. Each part of the vector consists of a term in u and a term in v. If we choose the right values for j, k, l and m, we will get a vector that looks exactly like the previous complex number. Comparing the two equations, if we set j equal to s, k equal to minus t, l equal to t, and m equal to s, they will produce exactly the same result. We can pre-multiply e by this matrix and get exactly the same result as we got from complex multiplication. To be clear, this works because we've specifically chosen the matrix elements to make it work. This tells us that there is a relationship between complex number multiplication and vector multiplication. If we multiply two complex numbers d and e, we get the same result as if we pre-multiply the vector e by a special matrix containing the values in d. Let's try this with a equals 2 plus 2i and b equals 1 plus 3i from the first example at the start of the video. We will form a matrix from the values in A and a vector from B and multiply them together. This of course gives the same result as the complex multiplication, which was minus 4 plus 8i. This is no surprise, we chose the matrix values to make it happen. To understand the effect of the matrix, it is useful to express the vector d in polar form. The vector d has a length r and makes an angle x with the x-axis, so it can be expressed in polar form as d equals st equals r cos x r sin x. We can apply these values for s and t to the previous matrix. This gives us a new way of expressing the matrix as r cos x minus r sin x r sin x r cos x. So we now know that multiplying two complex numbers d and e is equivalent to pre-multiplying the vector e by a special matrix made from the length and angle of d. This is starting to look a bit more promising. So what is this special matrix? Well, to help us find out, we can extract the common factor r into a separate matrix like this. The first matrix is cos x minus sin x sin x cos x. It only depends on x, not on r. The second matrix is r, 0, 0, r. It only depends on r, not on x. You can easily verify this by multiplying the two matrices together. But how did we know to do this in the first place? Well, if you are familiar with matrix transformations, you will probably recognise these two matrices. If you aren't familiar with matrix transformations, I have placed a link in the description below. They are both well-known standard matrices, and their product is fairly well-known too. The right-hand matrix using R is a well-known transformation that scales the 2D plane by factor R. This square illustrates what happens to the xy plane when we apply this transformation. The left hand matrix used in x is also a well known transformation that rotates the 2D plane by angle x counterclockwise about the origin. Again, the square illustrates what happens to the xy plane when we apply this transformation. So, this tells us that multiplying two complex numbers d and e is equivalent to scaling the vector e by r and then rotating it by x, where r and x are the polar coordinates of d. This explains why complex multiplication causes rotation. Complex numbers have many properties and have uses in many branches of mathematics and science. One of those properties is the ability to easily and intuitively represent scaling and rotation. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or join my Substack newsletter at graphicmaths.substack.com.